Alright, welcome back. It's time for Operation Crimson Smoke, the alien terror attack in Durban, South Africa, and the XCOM squad sent to resolve it. I hate this map for terror missions. This map's pretty bad in general. It's a beautiful map, it's lovingly created, don't get me wrong. I hate it because it's difficult to play on. Um, but, you know what? Beta 14, maybe we'll get a different spawn on it, and maybe it'll make things uh, very different. Let's get down there and let's see what's going on. Affirmative, Big Sky. Squad is cleared to engage hostile targets. Watch your fire out there. We have civilians on the ground. Repeat, civilians are in the AO. Here's your situation. Alien forces have dropped into the city of Durban earlier today and have been terrorizing the city's populace for quite some hours. Local mechanized and armor units, as you can see here, have attempted to crush the largest pocket of X-ray strength here at this dockside warehouse but were defeated by concentrated plasma fire from garrisoned opponents. Strike 1 under Lieutenant Scuba Man was dropped into Durban 20 minutes ago, and they've moved to the perimeter of the warehouse undetected. Big Sky is currently performing a fake-out landing opposite of the squad to give them a short window of opportunity with which to launch a surprise attack on the entrenched enemy. Sound more serious than usual? I've put on my Bradford sweater and I honestly cannot step out of character for a second for fear of getting people killed. This is all go right now. The squad will move up to the abundant cover, situated around phase line alpha, at which point we'll likely be coming into contact. We'll be using the cover and staying spread to try and neutralize the effect of any shock charges from chrysalid pods, and other than that, trying to make the best use of our infantry, laser rifles, rockets and explosives to dominate any kind of alien contact we come into. At Bravo, we shift into a more close quarters battle, where it's going to be some nasty, deadly, but ultimately necessary work push through the interior of the ruin warehouse. We'll make the best we can out of the heavy cover presented by the ruins and the concrete pillars, and we'll be keeping our eyes on our flanks to the right and left of the warehouse, but we'll be trying to commit most of our forces to the cover present inside the interior. The aliens could be anywhere, and the effect of pods on our flanks is going to be disastrous if a chrysalid pod or something pops out right when we don't need it to. So we'll try and keep an eye on our flanks, prioritize the middle of the warehouse, and most of all, we'll be trying to stay spread out to watch out for chrysalid pods coming in at us, and we'll be trying to move quickly to minimize the deaths of civilians. There's not much else to say. Let's get down there and let's bring everyone home alive. As I said, I can't stop being serious. I've put on the Bradford sweater that Jamble surprised me with for my birthday. And once I'm wearing this thing, I, I can't step out of character. I'm sorry. I, I just really can't. You know, I, mean, I obviously can, but to, to remind you guys I'm not crazy and to bring you back into the real world. You know, one thing that's really cool about this sweater, beyond the fact that it's the Bradford sweater, is it really embodies XCOM. Because you know what the thing about this sweater is? It's itchy, and I don't mean in that uncomfortable way, I mean just that little, tiny bit of itchiness that you just deal with. That's a good thing, and that's what XCOM is about. When you get too relaxed and too comfortable in your own skin, you start to make mistakes and slip up. God knows I do it every other episode. This sweater reminds me to be itchy. It reminds me to stay paranoid at all times. This sweater is XCOM. But enough about my deep metaphors, let's actually make our first move here. So the first thing I'm going to do here is move for my assault first. Running gun lets me reposition them if things go wrong. No contact. Next, where's my rocketeer? I want my rocketeer to be in close position. And then additionally, my best infantry need to be ready to fire. The heavy can reposition as necessary. The engineer can reposition. Okay. And the sniper gets first pick of good uh, half cover here to take position on. Big beta 14 change was Rocketeer accuracy generally trending down, so we need to steady aim on our Rocketeer as much as possible. Keep that shot ready. Now we all like a good plan, but... The story of this mission isn't going to be as simple as taking good cover and fighting our way through. That's why the plan is 
more just a simple, you know, this is what we're doing kind of thing. To be honest, it's as simple as saying, there's pretty shitty cover on the right, there's pretty shitty cover on the left, let's go up the middle. The real story of this mission is going to be when the chrysalid pod hits us, and how prepared we are for it. On the move. It's also going to be how quickly we can move to present, uh, prevent civilian deaths. Let's get that Rocketeer in position again. One of the really nice Beta 14 changes is that civilians in your sight range will not randomly die due to heart attacks anymore. That's a huge change and it means spreading wide on an arrow map like this should really help out with civilian casualties. We're going to want to spread wide here as uh, safely as we can without getting any chrysalid pods, of course. Hopefully, by next turn, we'll all be spread wide. Which, in turn, should allow us to have a good engagement. We'll probably want Iku up the back here. That's a perfect spot for Iku right there. All right, here we go. Got something over here. Get him, boys. Get him. You need to move quickly. Don't stop. This is the start. Okay, nice, nice. Make him bunch up. Bunch up. They're in your killing zone, boys. Throw your explosives out there. Maximize your fucking killing potential right now. Let's do it. Let's do it. What to use? Standard rocket, accurate at this point, gonna get me some kills. But oh my god, a shredder at this point, probably the better option. Launch it. Fucking do it right now. That's one down at the front. I'm gonna follow up with a grenade. I've got APs all of my, over my squad for exactly this situation. Exactly this situation. We don't need cover, we're just fighting floaters at this point. Right, who am I popping the first one on? Stolly's a good choice, obviously. Maximum fucking fragmentation power, Stolly! One more should finish this off. Let's give it to a... Whoa. Let's give it to Kamikaze, actually. Keep the uh, grenade on our infantry. Looks like I should be able to prioritize the front runner here for more damage. Not worry about the back one so much with Shredder and AP. Fucking do it, Kamikaze! That's a triple. Alright, pick off the rest. Call it a day. Iku, really surprised by these guys. Get your aim in, Iku. Finish him off, Wolfa. That's what I like to see. And scuba. Squad kinda got their hearts pumping out of their chests with this one as you can see. Now, am I gonna risk a 90% on air or am I just gonna kill the fucker? You know the answer already. I don't have time to bleed. Nice engagement. That's two chrysalid pods down straight off the bat. That's amazing. But there's still more. The bad news is there's still more chrysalids. The good news is this is going to let us speed up our movement. We have two chrysalid pods already down off the bat. We can get a little more, more uh, aggressive with our movement. And that's going to mean less dead civilians. So that's a pretty good pickup. You know, I've got to take a minute, uh, a second for, uh, take a second for a minute. I gotta take you aside for a second here and talk about Iku. A lot of people on the uh, Fugelman UFO, the abductor, talking about how Iku actually didn't do that well. And you know, I was kind of feeling that as the mission progressed. But when I reviewed the footage after the fact, he had a lot of important shots. And in fact, Iku hit that outside a huge crit at the start, which probably turned the tide of the mission. So, 
You know, I, I think with his nickname, he's holding on to a bit more guilt than he deserves. He's he's not a bad guy, man. He didn't do a bad job. I hope he I hope he feels better soon. With only three civilians dead, we do need to move quickly, but our next move can be to consolidate and reload. Where's my assault? Wolfer can move up here, grab a civilian. Wolfer also does not grab me any contact. That's good right now. Get my sniper into the vacated position soon. Rest of y'all can prepare to move up here, but probably not commit just yet. No unlucky activations. No unlucky activations. It's good to get the Rocketeer up close like that. Keep up the aggression, strike one, let's do it. Floaters on your right. Here we go. Nice, straight off the bat. Now we're just dealing with two of them. We have no scouts, so if those floaters just overwatched in position, this is uh, a little bit dangerous. But I'm not sure how they just reacted to that. The only way to find out is to send someone up there. Oh, we've got someone who's heavily armored for a reason. Still can't see him though. Alright. I want to get a read on this guy without running into his overwatch. And that's obviously not, uh, not what he cares about right now. Considering deploying the scanner here. Unlucky overwatch could uh, spell the end of a lot of things. And if I get this scanner in the right spot, it might reveal a bit, of the, a bit more of the map as well. No overwatch, that's good. Let's be pressure him. Let's be pressure him nice and good. In fact, it lets me flank the shit out of one of them, apparently. Come on, Kamikaze. No pressure. Should have pressured you. Maybe next time. Alright, a grenade would be instrumental here if I can get an HE on from Stoli. Nice little grenade right here, blow up some cover. Blows up any future cover they're about to take, blows up his left cover. That's what we want. Now I can easily disable his uh, shot here, but that should be a kill. It's a waste of the disable. Iku's got the money. Like I'm saying man, look at that crit. That is a big crit from Iku. The dude's a good troop, he just needs to remember that. Let's get Scuba in a position here for the last one. Oh no, I already moved Scuba. Uh, Ewo? How are you feeling? You're feeling good and I like that. Make it a big crit, buddy. That's the way. Alright. We're making good ground. We're not going to move up any further because we don't want that chrysalid activation to happen. Let's just keep steadying our rockets. Keep moving up slow. But fast. Slow but fast. And hey. Yet another pod. We're losing too many civs still, but there is a floater pod right there I just spotted. Can't fuck around, we need to engage that floater pod this turn, I think. There's nothing else for it. We've already lost so many civilians, these missions are really punishing. So what's dangerous here is the manner in which we activate the chrysalids is going to be pretty telling. If we hit him during this floater activation, it's obviously a lot harder. I don't have to tell you that. What can our sniper see? You can disable potentially on a 50. Good for getting rid of that overwatch. What are our other options? So this floater on the edge here, he gets a special mention because he's the easy weak link to pick off. I can move Kamikaze into a position where he's got an instant flank, assuming he's got range. Uh, 
I'm capable of moving Wolfer back into good cover as long as I can deal with this Overwatch. So the easy point is this floater, the hard point is this Overwatch. What I'm probably going to start off with is a nice disabling shot, and if I hit this, the turn's much easier. Miss. So now we've got some Overwatch to deal with, uh, and that's obviously much harder. Now, short of just running it, I can, instead of taking the flank, I can run Kamikaze new into a position where Kamikaze might be able to uh, suppress the Overwatcher without being hit himself. Either way, someone's going to have to run it. There you go. So now we can shut down that Overwatch. And that's all possible because of the way the line of sight works there with that pillar blocking. Now instead, we lost our flank, so we're going to have to make up uh, some new advantage here. For us, that advantage is going to be using our HE grenade to blow up his cover. Let's blow up that cover right there. Excellent work from Stoli, and now we've got a floater who is exposed, flapping in the wind. Now we don't want to move up any further, um, for the obvious reason of potential chrysalids. So we'll simply move back into cover. And 35 is not very good, but it's a 1 in 3. I don't blame you, kid. Ewa's got a nice shot already here without even moving up. And that's much better. Now that's going to allow Scuba to just completely move up. Ready for next turn. Renzel, ready in that rocket. Always ready for the chrysalid pod that's about to hit us. And speak of the devil, here we go. Nice relaxed pod. We've got a zombie and two chrysalids here. That's better than three chrysalids. Lightning reflexes. Watch the fuck out, Strike One. They're all the fuck over you. Jesus. Alright, what's your move? Alright, we need to get through this contact quick. I think the most efficient way to deal with these guys is going to be a rocket, but I might blow up my own cover in the process. Instead, I could rocket one of the floaters if I can deal with these guys, uh, you know, otherwise. That's going to revolve around some good AP grenade use, I think. And some good use of the infantry. Let's deploy the AP grenade in prime position. Make it happen, Stolly. Yeah, it's pretty bad damage, but we'll make it work. Here comes some big shotgun damage, at least. And now someone, not naming any names, should be able to finish this off. That's my boy. Hey, was not second in command for nothing. That's nice. Now we've only, you know, three members of our squad there. We can now focus everyone else on dealing with the rest of the threat. Now, where did that other floater overwatch exactly? I've lost track. May as well start with Scuba Man. If we don't kill this one, we can suppress him, but suppression's kind of worthless at this point. Because suppression isn't going to deal with the fact that these floaters are just going to shoot civilians if they're suppressed. So there's no point suppressing in this uh, scenario. Wish I had flush on Kamikaze, but I don't. So we'll take the sniper rifle shot. There you go. And that should just leave Renzol and Kamikaze. We'll move uh, Kamikaze up a second. Don't think he's going to get hit by any Overwatch. And we'll consolidate our position by moving up that Rocketeer, gaining the advantage. Reload on Kamikaze, maybe? No, I've only one floater left. I'd rather Overwatch. Plus this zombie to be hit. Alright, he's changed his mind. He's seen someone to snack on. We're going to have to put a stop to that. Run for your lives, civilians. Run for your lives. And here comes the guy I wanted to overwatch. But he's feeling pretty hopped up on uh, aggression anti-inhibitors, I guess. <laughs> because he is not protecting himself nearly as much as he should be. Now, he's not a big problem. The problem is this zombie. I need to take this zombie out. I think we've dealt with most of the pods on this map, so I'm going to rush up to try and deal with this guy before he kills someone. We need to save these lives. Right quick. What's my rocket? Not going to be good and useful in that situation, I think. Ugh. 
I I'm need this move. zombie killed. He's about to murder someone. Life saving work, Wolfer. Nicely done. But we still need someone to finish it off. Who's it gonna be? I would have to wager it's gonna be you, Kamikaze. That's some good work. Somebody's life just got saved out there. Alright, now maybe Stolly can move up and finish this off for me. You're out of grenades, but that's why we packed the shotgun on you, honey. And there you go. Commander, the operation was a success. Folks, it's as simple as that. That is the alien terror attack in Durban. And thanks to those chrysalids rushing headlong out of us, uh, wasn't too tough. I would like to thank Big Sky for that amazing fake out landing that drove all the aliens to retreat into a defensive position against where they thought we were coming from. I think the 20 minutes of infiltration that Strike One went through, sneaking through the suburbs, I think that really paid off here today. really came through on this one. I'm glad everyone made it back safely. Yes, so am I. And we've got some promotions too. I was just saying I wish you had flush kamikaze melon. Good promotion. And for Stolly, it's sapper time. Alright, but apart from that, everyone's gonna keep on trucking. Well performed by the entire squad. That was some good stuff. We will be in touch, Commander. So with that, we did it, right? We saved South Africa! Yeah. Yeah, look, I... I don't know how to tell you guys this, and I kind of waited, because I didn't want to. And there were hints to it in the last episode, and you might have picked up on them. Honestly, I'm surprised no one's mentioned it in the comments yet. Um, how do I tell you guys this? It's like... If... If, if it was like December 20, like, 1st, and the bank told you your house was getting foreclosed, and all your assets were getting taken away, and you were gonna have to go live in a trailer park for a couple of years until everything smooths over, life's taken a bad turn, and things have been taken away from you, but you've got a kid, and you don't want to ruin Christmas for your kid. So you wait, and you wait till you have Christmas, and everyone has a great Christmas, and little Timmy doesn't know that his house is about to go to the bank. And then you tell him later, after Christmas, and everyone can mourn together. So, I wanted to wait, and you might have noticed some creative editing last, last episode. It wasn't creative for the sake of being creative. There's a reason it was different. Uh, I hope, I hope I prepared something for you here. Uh, I hope this explains where the house has gone. I can get AWO. I can also get Zim. Do I need Zim? People are literally dying as I do this. We'll be going out on the terror mission I hate so much right after this. No, I lied to you. Hold on. Yes, I'll take that. There we go. After this. Right after this, guys. God damn it!
so yeah, South Africa actually isn't with us anymore, and the terror mission we went on actually well, didn't really have a point. Look, I mean, it had a point to me. Look at, look at this great news ticker. Human soldiers outfitted with unusual weapons and equipment saved lives. Now look, yes, it might be my fault that we lost South Africa, needlessly, but... It was a clear and present bug that confused the issue. And it's going to lead to new fail-safes where we judge mission timers based only on the in-game clock, not what the fatigue timer says. Because as we just discovered... And you're positive the report states that the alien craft crash-landed in the garage of a suburban middle-class family. Tanner residence. Because as... Roger, we'll look into it. We just discovered the fatigue timer now has a tendency to lie. And that got us in a little bit of trouble. But it's okay, because you know what? We still went on the mission. You guys would have yelled at me if I told you then. But now it's all over. No one died. No one has to say Beagle was taking unnecessary risks. Hey, the whole squad got promotions and experience. I got a little bit of my pride back by smashing the mission. We saved like 12 people from... They would have died. Okay, we got them out of Africa as it was collapsing. It's a great moment. All right, Iku, Iku hit hits some great shots. Scuba Man got some good experience. We'll you remember that, content, uh, but I don't think that, that thing? UFO Re remember the thing Big Sky did with the Sky Ranger, where where he he did the fake landing? That was pretty cool. So, I mean, all around, I think we can call this a learning experience. And you know, that's how I like to improve games. I like to learn uh, through experiences, and this was an experience we learned from. But that's okay. Because you know what? In Long War, we can just launch a little old satellite over South Africa. Boom! Alien base assault, bring them back into the fold. And you know what? That's exactly what I'm going to do with South Africa. But until then, you know, we had a great mission. Nothing to report at the moment. Nothing to Board's report at clear. the moment. The board is clear of South Africa. South Africa's gone now. If you haven't been listening for the past 10 minutes, hi. South Africa's gone, and it's not coming back for a while. Um, but you know, life... Life's about learning to move on and accepting that the house is gone and the bank owns it now. And I'm going to move on from losing South Africa. And, and we're just going to say that the government were a big bunch of pansies and it wasn't my fault. But you know, there's always positives. And now we're going to move on. And we're going to keep having a great campaign against the We've alien been picking menace. Up some odd transmissions lately. We have. Some nut calling himself Commander Straker has been all over the news ranting about shadow operatives. Probably from South Africa. They're all crazy. They just left the council, Bradford. Did you see that? It just happened. Oh. Hi. Didn't see you there. Just reminiscing. So anyway, let's get straight back into it now. Uh, and we're just going to go ahead and hit scan. And we're going to see if that covert operation pops up. Hey, Alien Materials is ready. Awesome. You know what? I'm a good player of the game, and I don't make big mistakes. And I'm... <laughs> and I'm just gonna make some good, uh... Some good... Research... Choices... Right now. Right here. It's happening. Alright, what to pick next? So the next thing I'm gonna go for... Um... Actually, first of all... Take a look at Beta 14 has introduced all these beautiful new pictures to all the new, uh... The research, the majiggies. It's great. This is awesome. Actually, he's really helpful in identifying UFOs now, too. Uh, but yeah, all these awesome new pictures are... Did I say awesome yet? They're really awesome. Um, so the next thing I really want is improved body armor, which is going to take me into uh, advanced body armor, which is going to take me into carapace uh, as a product that I can make from that technology. And that's obviously the next thing, is survivability now that we've got the lasers. But I'm going to take a pit stop. And I haven't done this in my other campaigns yet. This is all new. This is scary. But, I'm going to get Xenoneurology in the middle. I'm going to try and get my alien captures happening earlier. We're going to go on base assaults earlier. We're going to be trading these captives for technology and council requests and soldiers earlier. I, th I hope it's going to pay off. So the timing here should be 14 days to build an arc thrower. Well, 14 days to research it. Then like a week to build an arc thrower. In that time, our thermogenerator should have finished around the same time. We're going to be building an alien containment up here. Uh, with money that we save and we're hopefully going to be able to get our captures going for next month I hope we want to get it happening before the game gets too hard and we can't really safely get captures anymore so while we're still dealing with mutons we're going to try and capture a muton for alien grenades and we're going to try and get our capture game going I think it's going to pay off 
Um, but yeah, that's why we're going for Xeno Neurology next. But we have a covert operation to handle. And here it is. Alright. It is a data recovery. That's probably a blessing. It'll be a bit easier than the Exalt uh, covert extractions. So we've got to go in there. We need to recover our covert operative, uh, 00 Kilroy. And we need to get out with the equipment, basically. Um, what that means from gameplay terms is this is like a capture and hold. We have to hold the transmitter that is transmitting data back to us until the Exalt are all dead. Um, it's a bit easier than the covert extractions. The extractions are about actually getting out as a gameplay you know, feature. You actually have to escape. But we'll come to that later. We are confident that you will handle this matter with discretion. Yes, I will. Um, Alright, well, let me gear up my squad here. What? <laughs> I mean, I can I can skip time to get more people, but I'm a little scared of doing that after last time. So let me just pick from what I've been given, and let's hope I don't tempt fate in doing so. Booyah! Alright, so, what exactly are you looking at here? Um, what you're looking at here is basically me dedicating myself to the idea of acing this mission. Uh, gone are the ceramic plates of plus one HP. Um, gone are the snipers because this map is a roadway and in my experience of Exalt maps, the only roadway is that horrific fountain map where the fountain blocks all sniper fire. So, instead, uh, I'm hedging my bets going for close range here. Does Beagle actually know what hedging his bets means? I don't I don't know if he knows what that saying means. Um, I got a really lucky reroll on Jive into an infantry, which is good. Two infantry and uh, the gunner should all told be a lot of good damage along with all the shotguns I'm bringing. The plan is basically to abuse the transmitters so that I can run up and get free moves on the exalt, then clear them out with the move after that. So we're going to be really depending on getting good uh, transmitter hops here. But, you know, it's an exalt mission. When aren't you depending on good hops? Uh, we've got flashbangs to basically uh, be our backup in case the hops fail. But, you know, we're really betting it all on Kilroy's fine transmitting work. So, let's get out there and, you know, let's see if this actually works the way I think it's going to work. Actually, let me check one thing. Hey, Merlin just came off duty. Alright, I don't have any officer trainings. Excellent. We look forward to hey, uh, what class progress. is Merlin? Hey, a really good, uh, a really good infantry just came off. Hey, give me a second. Alright, that was fortuitous. So now, I've got three really good infantry for this mission. That's definitely a bonus. I might have to free up a, no, I don't even need to free up a scope. That's excellent. Alright, well that is definitely a bonus. Oh, Zim's equipment got taken away, I see. Give me Zim's equipment. Was I not using... Z what the fuck is going on? Which gunner was I using? I was using... Why is Cell down here? I don't understand anything that's happening. Okay, it's all good. Um, point being, I just got an infantry for free. That's really good. She was just coming off fatigue. Uh, and that's going to make this mission a little bit easier. But... There is one thing I need to change first. Hang on. There we go. Alright, everybody's nice and looking good in their police colors now. So, it's time for SWATCOM to move in, take out some domestic terrorists. Let's hit launch, let's do it up. Dropship has arrived. 
We're moving on an exalt cell working from within Egypt. Strike one is tasked with securing the area for our operative while they retrieve the exalt data. All right. Well, we got to keep Kilroy covered while she hits all the transmitters. It is the horrible fountain map, but at least we planned for it. We've got a lot of infantry, and this is really going to depend on some aggressive play uh, bouncing off good transmitter usage. Until then, uh, stay safe and come back and see me again when we go on Operation Unceasing Stranger. Have a good one.